well. As you can see, it's dark <laughs> at the end of a really exciting day yeah. mudlarking. We've had a fantastic time and found some really great finds. So if you want to find <laughs> yeah. out what they are, you'd better come with us. So let's, let's do, do it. it. I've got my first finds down here. Um, I first saw this pipe bowl sticking up out of the ground, the rim of it, and I pulled it. And of course, it's a heart pipe look in good nick, and I gave it a wash in the water. But as I was doing that, I had a look over here and spot this, and it's a star. It's a little brass star, like. Yeah, just a little star shaped thing. It reminds me of like the stars of um, like police uniforms. And it's weird because mum found that um, lion head um, off a police cape, a police uniform cape, like an old Victorian one. And here's a star. I'm wondering if that's also off a police uniform. That would be cool. But you know what I'm thinking, as usual. That would be perfect to cast. <laughs> yeah. Cast that in silver. It's funny because I found a star-shaped thingy here last time. I spotted something down here. Wedged between these stones. And it's a little buckle. I think it's got a pattern on it. Look at that, yeah. It's either a pattern or... Oh no, I think it says something. I'll say something. Ugh. I can't read it. I'll have to wait till I get home. But yeah, interesting. And this looks like another another buckle. Oh, actually, that bit I just threw off it, I think, is the remains of the leather that went on the buckle. And the thing is, I also found and a buckle. Alex thing. just found a buckle too. <laughs> it's a buckle day. There you go, Alex. Oh, that's another buckle. Thanks. <laughs> thanks a lot. Found a few other things down here actually. We've got a nail, a lovely, really old square nail, and this thing, which I think is actually of a parasol, and a bit of the wooden um, kind of post of the parasol still attached. So I think that's really quite cool. And there's also a glass bottle stop down there as well, quite a nice bubbly one. Oh, we've not done too badly so far for finds. <laughs> we haven't been here for very long. Oh, I think I found something interesting. Look at this. It's a baby's dummy handle or pacifier handle. We found these before. When we first found them, we had no idea what they were. We searched online, searched everywhere. There was nothing about them. But we finally got a breakthrough when we searched in some old books. And now they're known as dummy handles. And we've actually in another video put them together to demonstrate how they work. This slit here was to let the air through into the teat. Fantastic, this is a ceramic one, but we have found bone ones as well. And while I was talking about the dummy handle, I spotted what looks like a tiny bead. <laughs> it is. It's so small, it's like a grain of sand. There it is, look. <laughs> a tiny blue bead. Oh, is this another one? No, I think it's a bit of verdigris. Let's see. Yeah, it's just a bit of verdigris. But yeah, look, the tiniest of beads. A bit of green here, which means copper or brass. Oh, it's stuck to a big clump. Let's see. Oh, 
Oh, I'm not sure what that is. But um, as you've seen from other videos, it's, it's always good to take these clumps because they can turn out to be very interesting. Random brass thing. Look at that. Ooh. And this is a winder for winding your wick up in your lamp. So these would have been really quite common. Down here is a slate pencil. That's quite a long one. Usually a lot shorter than that. Looks like a plain pipe bowl. Yeah, it is. Just a plain one. Oh, I've been dying to find a whole one of these. It's an old carpet bowl look, but it's half of a carpet bowl. You can only just see some of that blue glaze left on there as well. So it's a carpet bowl that's been through the wars. Yeah, it's a, on our bucket list to find a complete one of these one day. But for now, I think I'll be leaving that behind. I found some more um, random bits here and a lot of brass actually. This has another star on it. I don't know if you can see that. That's strange, isn't it? I just found a star. I've got a star. A, a real star theme going on. It's really strange. Another random bit of brass. Another random bit of brass. You never know, they might be something. Um, a dog tooth as well. Come across a lot of these. Fang. Um, a pipe bowl. I think this was a football pipe bowl. Um, you can see there and there where the ball and foot would have been. And what's mum found over here? I don't know. I think oh. it's like a lead toy, but... Um, oh yes, it's I, a... I can't recognise what it is. Funny little component of something. Yeah, that's strange. And then I, I found something down here. Look. It's oh. pink and it's glassy and I think it's broken there, oh. but I don't know what it is. Oh, I think it was like a pendant or something. It's had something on the top there, look, that came halfway down. Oh no. I don't think it is broken. It's not broken. That's yeah, strange. look, it's cut glass. It's been... Unless it was the lid or something. Yeah, can you see how it's been drilled like a little way down, like it's had something in there? It's been a pendant or something. Oh, I don't know. I like it. Isn't I it pretty? Like it. That's lovely. Isn't it pretty? It's a lovely pink if it colour. It wasn't a pendant, it will be one. <laughs> yes, we'll make it into one, that's for sure. It's really cute. There's a little ceramic object here. I'm not sure what it is. It's not a dish, it's like the cap off something. It's got the remains of um, brass or something on it. Hmm, maybe the top of a, a tap or something? You know, the cap that goes on the top of a tap. I think I might just have found a little morning button down here. You can always tell that little glassy texture. One of the little mini ones. Oh, I think it's broken. Yeah, unfortunately. Oh, can you see that? It's like a horseshoe. That's a new one. It's got a bit of a chip out of it and it looks like it's been washing around. Washing around? Washing around for a little while. Unfortunately. But that's cool. Everyone you pick up is different, so it's always interesting. And um, while I was here, I also spot a little blue bead down there. You can see it quite well. The blue ones seem to stick out really well. You can see them really well. Oh no, I've got this bone button here actually that I picked up. I've got a few things in my hand. Random brass things again. Uh, I think that might be a bead as well, but I'm not sure. But yeah, let's get this little bead down here. There you go. A little pressed glass bead, actually. So I just found this tooth. And I don't know what it is, what it's off. It's like all like textured, like rough. And it's got this weird like 
I don't know, pointy bit. I don't know, is that a pig tooth? If you know what animal that was off, let us know below because I don't, I don't recognise it. I don't think I've ever seen a tooth like that before. Something in the water here looks like some sort of strange lid. Ah, oh, this water's freezing. <gasps> it's not a lid. Oh my goodness, look at that. It's a face looking back at me. That's the hat. Oh wow, I love that. Hello. Hello face. I think I've gone mad. I'm talking to uh, I'm talking to my finds now. <laughs> look at that. It's it's like a bonnet, like a straw bonnet, look. That is lovely. Just shows. I wasn't going to pick that up because I thought it was just a broken lid. And look what it turned out to be. Fantastic. Looks like someone's been scraping around up here. And I've actually found a few things. Found this little, i still got that tooth. Little corset fastener, look. That's cute. It's raining a little bit, so. We are getting slightly soggy up out here. Um, but then, I spotted this beautiful cog. Look at that. It's in really good condition. It's not, it's not all hard and crusty or anything. It's really nice. Take that. We've got some projects for these in mind that we haven't done yet. And what else did I spot? I think I spot something else around here. I'm have to find it again. Oh, there. See that stone? What is this? Is it a bit of chalcedony or agate or something? Look at that. I don't know. I like it though, I'm gonna take it. That's a really pretty rock. I wondered when I was about to find one of these. My first cod marble, it's so tantalising the way it's kind of just sticking out there. Gorgeous. Oh, wait. Have I spot a bead just here as well? Yeah. Yeah, I have, look. It's another tiny blue bead. Okay, a little catch up on some of the finds that I've picked up as I've been walking along. Um, I've got, this is the end of a sugar crusher. I've got a square copper nail, a bag seal, flower bag, um, a dermal denticle of the endangered skate fish, which is always a random find, a um, button and a tiny green iridescent bead. So that's my handful. But I've also found a little bead down there and a interesting little something there, some opalescent glass. But I'm going to have to put these in my bag first so I can grab them. This button is stamped with dense spring button and was once attached to a leather glove. Traces of the leather are still attached to the button. The story of dents begins with John Dent who was born in about 1750 in Worcester, Worcestershire, England. After serving seven years apprenticeship as a glover, John started his own business in Worcester sometime after 1772 when he earned his freedom to trade. He married Elizabeth Davis in 1775 and was soon taking on apprentices of his own, which later included his own three sons, John, Thomas and William. Worcester had been a centre for glove making for over 700 years and between the 1790s and the 1820s the city had more than 150 glove manufacturers who employed over 20,000 workers. Mysteriously, on the particularly dark night of the 21st of February 1811, John Dent went missing. By April, when no trace of him had been found, his home and factory on the high street were put up for rent. 
One month after that, John's body was found floating in the River Severn, only a few miles away from where he had last been seen. As his watch and other valuables were still in his clothing, it was assumed that he had fallen into the river near the Severn Bridge. The coroner returned a verdict of accidental death. He was 61. By 1802, John's sons, John and William, had started their own glove-making business, becoming increasingly successful, and in 1834, a London branch was opened on Friday Street. The business went from strength to strength, moving to larger premises on Wood Street in 1845. Though most of the preparatory work was done in the factories, the sewing of the gloves was executed by women and children in the outlying villages and cottages. These workers were paid a pittance for their labour and most had to rely on the local parish for handouts in order to survive. John and William became extremely wealthy, wealthy enough to purchase Studley Castle and estate in Gloucestershire where they both lived the lives of the gentry. In 1826, John became Mayor of Worcester and in 1849, High Sheriff of the County of Worcestershire. William was also Mayor of Worcester from 1833 to 1834. I wonder if they ever spared a thought for the poor women and children they used to make themselves rich. It was John and William's nephew, John Croucher Dent, who eventually inherited everything took over ownership of the company and the castle. He married Emma Brocklehurst in 1847, herself the daughter of a wealthy silk manufacturer. Emma spent her days embellishing the castle and collecting antiquities. What a very different lifestyle she led compared to the glove sewers and factory workers who financed it. In 1852, the company's name was changed to Dent Allcroft & Co and by 1880, 12,000 parcels a day were being dispatched worldwide from their London warehouse. At that time, Worcester was still their main factory, where they employed a thousand workers, with many other workshops around Britain and Europe, France being where the leather was processed from the raw kid and lamb skins. Up to one million kid skins and thousands of other skins were kept at Worcester. Here they were sorted, washed and soaked in egg yolks. The firm used an incredible 1,200,000 eggs for this purpose every year. The company still exists today as Dewhurst Dent PLC. So much history from one little button. Right, so this is what I spotted first. It's a strange shaped thing. I can't see it very well. I think it's a really funky pressed glass bee. I was going to say bead, but then I turned it around and there's no hole in that end. And there is there. So, hat pin end, that's what I'm feeling. Yeah, the end of a hat pin. An opalescent glass as well, which is absolutely beautiful. Oh, I'm chuffed with that. But I also found something else down here. This little red bead is not just any old little red bead. It's a, it's called a white heart bead. And these were also used as trade beads in Africa as well. Very popular kind of trade bead. So a pretty little bead, but with a somewhat dark history behind it. I mean, this one probably never went to um, Africa since it's in a contemporary dump here. It's in a contemporary tip. So, but a lot of them did make it to Africa for trade. But it's a beautiful little thing. We, we do find them uh, fairly regularly, these little white hearts. Don't find many green hearts though. And that's where the center, instead of being white, it's actually really dark green. There's a really quite lovely piece of sponge ware here. Isn't that pretty? I love that. 
I love the wonky blobby patterns. <sighs> it's beautiful. And here, another bee, this is black. That's nice. It's like jet black. Gorgeous. And that's my hat pin end as well that I was going to show mum. There's a little lead soldier. <laughs> he's, um, I think he's seen better days. He's also tiny. Look at that. <sighs> Is he even worth bringing home? Bless him. I think you can see what that is down there. Oh, it's a German marble. Oh. That is hard to identify, but I think it's a lattice core swirl marble. And these are hand, were handmade in Germany over a hundred years ago. Wow. It's, I mean, it's not in the best conditions, but <laughs> it's still great to find. Okay, this is really funny because I bent down to pick this up because I thought, I don't know what I thought it was. It just looks square. It just looked like a piece of quartz. Turns out it's porcelain tooth out of a denture. What are the chances? <laughs> it's a molar out of a denture. That's really funny. I spy something down here. What's this? Oh, Ling! It's a little face. Another little... Oops, you can't see it. It's another little face. It's a bit dirty though. And he snapped off. Looks like he's holding a letter. <laughs> Oh, the poor little dirty boy. That's cool though. Second soldier of the day. This one looks a little bit bigger than the last one though, look. He's missing a leg, but he's still got his head. And I've got these two bits of glass that kind of like melted together. And I think they were beards at one point in their lives, but they've melted. So, X beads beautiful sponge work pattern on this. That's so pretty. Might be able to make some jewellery with that. It's a bit thick. I think I've just bought a very orange bead down there. Look. I don't know if you can see it. There. Let's hope it's not as melted as the last two. No, it's perfect. Oh, that's pretty. Gorgeous colour, I love that colour. It's like a honey yellow. There's a little panel bottle here, but it's a bit different to ones I normally find. Look, it's got this big bit at the bottom. You don't usually find them like that. So I'm not sure. I might keep it. There's an ink bottle here. Is it a hole? Yes, it is actually. And it's a sheer top that's been flame polished, look. That would have been snapped off and it would have been really sharp. They put it back in the flame to smooth it off. A cheap little ink bottle, but so cute. Keeping that. I think you might be able to spot this fine. Can you see it? It's just down there. A little green bead. It's faceted. I think it's glass. Faceted glass bead. I think it might be a, a little bit melted, but the hole still goes all the way through, so it's a bead. There's lots of little bits of metal, but let's put this button here, look. I think that says suspender and there is a hook and I found this funky piece of like early plastic look at the colours in it and the pattern, I like that 
I saw some um, bits of brass and stuff up here as well. I'm not sure what that is. We believe this to be part of a gas lamp which regulates the intake of air into the lamp and would have been positioned below the burner. It's made of brass and has cleaned up beautifully. The invention of gas lighting is attributed to Scotsman William Murdoch in 1792. It is said he was smoking his pipe next to the fire when he noticed the gas coming from a burning coal. He took a small piece and put it in the bowl of his pipe, which would have been a clay pipe, and sealed up the top so the gas would come down the stem. He then lit the gas and watched it burn. Being an inventor and engineer, Murdoch enlarged on his experiment, resulting in the installation of gas lighting throughout his house in Redruth, Cornwall. Before this, both domestic and street lamps had been confined to either oil or candles. The first recorded gas street lights were installed in London by German Frederick Albert Windsor, Friedrich Albrecht Winzer, in 1807. The following was published in the monthly magazine of that year. On Thursday evening, 4th of June, the first public exhibition of Mr. Windsor's gas lights took place in honour of His Majesty's birthday. In the lighting of a great length of lamps, similar to the side of a street, at a considerable distance from the carbonising furnace in Mr. Windsor's house in Pall Mall. Gas lighting eventually extended into domestic use, but only for those who could afford it. Even by the beginning of the 20th century, when electricity was increasingly being introduced, farms, rural communities and the poor of towns were still restricted to the use of oil and candles for lighting. We have an interesting connection to the history of early gas street lighting, as shown in this broadsheet dated November the 18th, 1824. At a numerous and highly respectable meeting of the inhabitants of the township of North Shields, held at the house of Mr. Thomas Peascod on the evening of November the 17th, 1824. Pursuant to notice, and at the request of several inhabitants, for the purpose of considering the best mode of lighting for the township with gas. One of the gentlemen listed for the committee is our very own Hugh Robert Rodham, son of our ancestor Sarah Rodham, who actually printed the broadsheet herself. Sarah was our four and five times great-grandmother who took over the stationery, bookbinding and printing business in North Shields on the death of her husband Cuthbert in 1797. Sarah not only ran the business but also brought up their remaining six children, taking on her son James as her apprentice. It's sometimes good to remember that all of our ancestors lived through and experienced the history we now look back on with wonder. Just as one day our descendants will be looking back on our lives and times. That's strange. This is quite spiky this. There is another bead identical to, in colour, to the first one I found. This is like a oval shape. Yeah, it's isn't it? It's just it's like almost exactly the same colour. It's beautiful, gorgeous colour. And look at that bit of pipe bowl. Oh, it's all knobbly. That's weird. I think I just hit a lucky spot actually because something there, I'm not sure if it's a bead, but over here. Can you look see that? Oh wow. It's a marble, but it's beautiful. It's got the blue and red. I've not seen one like that before. That's love that. And another one up here. Is it a marble or is it a bead? I'm not sure. Maybe a giant bead. Oh, it is. Look at that. It's got a hole in it. It almost looks like uranium. It's kind of got that. Um, uranium UV glow to it. Um, actually, having said that, I have my UV torch here in my pocket because it's going to be dark not too long from now. So I thought we'd bring these along. 
Yes, it is, look. Can you see it? Is it coming? Is it showing up very well? It's glowing. It is uranium. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh, I'm chuffed with that as well. A marble and two beads. Oh no. It's a soldier without a head. <laughs> As usual. I think I've got myself another little marble here there, look. Blue and white. That's really pretty as well. I'm on a roll right now. What else have we got here? I'll keep the camera on just in case. Just in case there's something. Oh yes there is. Look, little lead wheel. Little toy wheel. And a little button down here I think. that I think it's just plain but it's still a button oh is that an oh look a bottle a bottle stop and is that a bead oh it was a bead oh it just literally just crumbled in my hand just like to nothing I hate it when that happens is there anything else lurking under here I don't think so just a bead that's turned to dust like completely ah but what's that where is it there a bead it's a ceramic one i think these were painted they were all different colors and i think they were the christmas tree oh wait i've just seen something as well yeah, anyway, I'll finish what I was saying. I think they were Christmas tree decorations, like strings of ceramic beads, all different colours. Anyway, look, it's a little lead figure there. I'm definitely on a roll here. It's a little lead dog. That's funny, this is the third lead dog I found this year as well. It's got a few of its feet missing, but there is a few bits of lead up here, actually. You can see, like, Random scraps of lead, look. And there. Unfortunately, there's loads of it around. Oh no. I pulled this out. I thought it was whole. Oh no. I thought it said, I am pepper. It's a little pepper. Oh. It was a little pepper pot, it was a little woman, and on there was written, I am pepper. But it's <laughs> just wiped off. It's an acid anyway, because she hasn't got a heed. I'll leave it be. Rest in pieces. That's a pipe bowl. It's got anything on it? No, it's just plain. But it's still in good condition, so I'll take it. Um, it looks like someone's been digging here, actually. Well, yeah, definitely been digging here. Recently, that looks like it was a giant doll's leg. Look at that. Magnificent thing. And that's a pipe stem. Lots of bottles as well. Like a magnesia bottle. Oh no, it's whole and unchipped. Oh no, it's got a chip. That means I can't take it. Phew. Someone's silk stockings from the 1940s. How weird. Oh, look down here. There's two of those little poison bottles. I'm not sure what poison was in... Oh, and I found that. I'm not sure what kind of poison was in them, but we think it might have been iodine or some such thing. There's two of them here, look. 
Neither of them have poisonous written on them, which we found them with poisonous on before. What's that? A rock. And here is a little pot. I think it's got some sort of... Um, I don't know if that's a pattern on there. Hang on. Oh yeah, it is. It's flowers. So yeah, a little pot, unfortunately, cracked. And two poison bottles. Two poison bottles. Fantastic. Don't think I found a screw top one before. Is it a bead or is it a berry? Can't be a berry in this time of year. No. It's a melted bead. <laughs> Look, that's where the hole was, I think. Melted bead or melted button. Is this a bead? Yes, it is. A little bead just lying there. Well, what else could it do other than just lie there? <laughs> I think I've got a tiny little bead there as well. Yes, look, it's a little blue, light blue pony weed. Um, and I also found that is just a rock. But I found this Smarty Lid, vintage Smarty Lid, look. Rome trees. I believe these are actually quite collectible. Oh, I think I might keep hold of that. And I found this little tiny bottle, little pill bottle. I like these as well. They're handy for keeping um, like my gems and things in for my jewellery making. I think this is the handle of a safety razor. What's this? Oh no, look! <laughs> it's a rabbit driving a car. I think he's been in a bit of an accident. <laughs> oh, what a shame. Well, there's a strange pipe bowl. Hmm, don't find many that shape. Oh, I would say is it a bead or is it a berry, but I already know it. it's a bead because of the patterning on it. It's a leaf! Oh look! Can you see that? It's a bead in the shape of a little leaf. Oh my goodness, that's so cute. That's my favourite bead of today. A leaf bead. So cute. I love that. An exciting little something around here, look. I think the edge is chipped, but... Oh, wow, yes, look at that. It's a bracelet, I think. A bracelet bead. And I think that's Niagara Brothers. But what a shame that the corner's chipped off. Oh... That would have been so cool. Oh, it's still it's still cute though. I still like it. It's a really big ceramic button here. Well, I wouldn't say big. I suppose I really mean it's got big holes in it. Yeah, I like it. Another tiny. And a pipe bowl. Oh yes, it's a really ditzy little pipe bowl look. I like that. Interesting shape. Another pipe bowl. Of rather large proportions. Minuscule little lid there, look. It's tiny. Really, really tiny, look.
My second only one of these today. It's a teeny stopper. I love it. I found this tiny little gem that I think is a bit knackered. And I just found another bead. All faceted. Blue one. Been a bit of a bead day today for me. This looks like a giant stopper. That's quite a big chunky stopper that. That's still got its cork in. <laughs> Some other finds that we actually can link to some of the finds we found today. Yeah, some previous finds. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think I'll start with this, which is unusual because recently I found something kind of similar. Um, it's up here in the window of wonders. And um, we're not 100% sure. We think they're kind of pips of epaulettes of uniforms. Yeah. And I, I found these pretty, like, not long after the other, which is odd. Yeah, yeah. And they're... They're both made the same way. They're both both pressed metal. Yeah. And they've both got a little, like, it looks like they had a little pin in the middle, didn't they? Yeah, like where they've been stuck to some material. Yeah. So I think they're some, off something similar, yeah. aren't they? But I like that. I like the little star. And I'm going to cast these, actually, in silver. Yeah, they're cute. Okay, so one of my favourite finds, if not my favourite find, is this head. Oh, because yeah. I was totally unexpecting it. When I found it, Sorry, it's got a bit of blue tack on to hold it in place. It was upside down like this it looks in like the a water, lid. and I thought it was some sort of broken lid. But yeah, you were there when I found it, and it's really um, finely made. Actually, it is, isn't in it? Bisque porcelain. She's very pale. Like the colours are very pale. And there's something actually we can link with a find that we found recently. Do you know what that is? Yeah, the grapes um, and the grape vines. And I'll bring our. Oh, if you look over. at the hair on this lady on the morning necklace, she also has the grapes and grapevines, which are, of course, related to Christian symbolism for uh, life. So that's really cool. Yeah. There's another connection there. That could be the same woman. And I'll mention this beautiful little, what we believe is the end of a, a lady's hat pin. So it's a beautiful little press glass, opalescent glass, um, hat pin end and it looked like it did have gilding on it as well and we actually have found something similar to this before here's another one but the gilding is actually still visible on this this one here and you can see it's made in a very similar way pressed glass there's one hole of the same size where a, a iron steel pin would have gone in there Yeah, they're and beautiful. they were both gilded I so. think that opalescent glass is really lovely. It is, isn't it? I absolutely love it. It's so pretty. And another find I would like to point out is this. We found one of these a long time ago and it baffled us as yeah. to what it was. We thought at first it was some sort of thing to do with um, sewing, sewing yeah. or um, like lace making, lace making bobbin, but none of it made sense really. 
um, after a lot of research, because there was nothing online about them, I finally discovered that it was part of one of these. these. <laughs> and they're baby's dummies or pacifiers, as you might call them in America. But um, you see there's two handles here, exactly the same. Mm -hmm. And we found the bone discs separately. Yes, yeah, so we found we found both of these um, ceramic handles yeah. and these bone rings. And then we bought some modern dummies and took the teats off them and put them on. And if you see, when you uh, squeeze them, the air goes back in. And that's what this little um, line is for yeah, here. Yeah, the notch. It's for letting the air back into the teats. Otherwise, it would be completely sealed and it wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to well, kind of squish yeah. it all the way down. And when you push it on, it would stay yeah it wouldn't you be, can't get it on yeah. if the air doesn't just can't escape you know what i mean yeah <laughs> and of course the little hole in the end is for the ribbon so that is what that yeah. is we reconstructed these ones um so um we actually originally our original one was a bone one yeah we, we do some have bone some bone ones. ones and one with a hand shape yeah cast in the end so we have a couple of bone ones and now we have three of the ceramic so ones. So they come in all sorts of designs. And you can see how they're kind of diff two different sizes, size ones there. Maybe yeah. for different aged babies. And here is my favourite find. Um, it might not be everyone's favourite find, but I think this is really pretty. It's cut glass and I absolutely love that pink colour. Look at that dusty pink. It's yeah, gorgeous. It's beautiful. And Mum found out that it is actually, it's not the end of a hat pin or of a necklace. It's actually... Um, a, off a chandelier, off a lamp. Yeah, a chandelier or a lamp drop. Yeah, so that was unusual. I, I, I swore that was going to be like the end of a hat pin. Like you could actually make it into a hat it pin. It could actually be. I mean, they might have used the same design. But look, I love look. Oh, it sparkles because it's yeah, cut glass. Anyway, I really like that, so I'm going to put that in the window. Put it in there. Little plant pot. I don't forget to put my favourite find Mom's in the window. Mum's favourite find, which is the head as well. We'll put her in. And there's one more thing I'd like to mention is this wheel, because I found something that this wheel probably belonged to. And Alex will just fetch it for me. Here it is. We've got, got it prepared here in the window. It's a cannon, a toy cannon, still on its carriage. And look. Yeah, this the wheel is just the yeah. right size. So all we need is another wheel like this, and we've got a complete little cannon there. We may already have one, actually. Yeah, we we're going to have to have a look in the collection of we lead are. wheel. Yeah, wheels. that's probably what that was off. That was cool, isn't it? Yeah, I love things like we this. We should try and recreate it. We can't talk about everything, no. or we'd be here for a very long <laughs> time, but feel free to discuss it amongst yourselves. Um, but there's one more thing I would like to point out, and that is this little tooth that I found. I don't even know how I saw it, yeah. because there were so many bits of, you know, stone and um, things on the foreshore. But it is um, a tooth out of a denture. Yeah. And I think it's made of porcelain, but it, as Alex pointed out to me, it has a hole. It goes all the way through. Through there. So it could be off brace, out of um, a brace rather than a denture with a wire through there but the hole makes me think necklace yeah so make a weird uh tooth, tooth bead tooth bead <laughs> but that's quite, i like that as that well. was quite interesting actually i like all of these things i mean i love that little button with the horseshoe on it but we can't talk about any of it everything yeah so that begs the question of what would you like to see in the window of wonders this week apart from the things that we have already added so I'm sure you'll probably all agree we've had a really good day today. We found uh, loads of beads, found some marbles and um, things that we've not had a chance to examine yet. No. So we're really excited to getting back home and um, doing the research on some of our finds. Yeah. That's always the fun bit when we get to wash them and see what they look like. <laughs> Um, well, washing's not so much no, fun. The washing is not fun. No. Forget that bit. No. That's that's all a lie. <laughs> it's the seeing what they look like after they've been washed. Yeah, is doing the, the research. We yeah. have to do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, on that note, we're going to say goodbye and thank you. So a great big thank you to everyone who has watched the video up to this point. Yeah. Who has subscribed. Uh, hit the subscribe button down below there somewhere i think it's down that way uh left a comment down below and of course a big thank you to all of our patrons on patreon who help to keep us going every yeah. month thank you so much we appreciate it greatly. we do and it really does help us and to anyone else who has 
donated or just commented or helped us in any other way thank you so much thank you and we'll see you again next, next week. week bye, bye. Even by the beginning of the 20th century, when electricity was in ecclesiastical architecture.